spacecraft communicator uh, Tony Antonelli uh, at 3.52 a.m. Central Time called up the go for the Dewar but Burn. Commander Brent Jett and pilot Chris Ferguson uh, with uh, right behind them, Dan Burbank, the flight engineer, uh, getting everything uh, set up uh, and ready to go for the Dewar but Burn, reorienting the shuttle so that its uh, tail is pointed in the direction of travel. They'll be firing the uh, two orbital maneuvering system engines for two minutes and 40 seconds, slowing the uh, space shuttle by about 200 miles an hour so that it begins to uh, return home to Earth through the Earth's atmosphere. Five seconds, orbital maneuvering system engines enabled. Propulsion systems officer reports uh, two good engines burning on Atlantis as it begins its descent home. And at this point, Atlantis's aerosurfaces should be encountering the effects of the atmosphere. The shuttle has uh, seven aerodynamic control surfaces that begin, begin to become active at this point. Four are elevons, two on each side of the tail. The shuttle beginning its uh, first roll reversal, going to the left, banking at 62 degrees. Velocity 16,500 miles an hour. Here's a look at Atlantis's track over the Pacific Ocean, about to cross over the equator, heading for the Yucatan Peninsula. I got a visual again, steady, steady glow, steady dot, uh, with a very visible contrail behind us. That's great, Jeff. The narration is wonderful. And we're receiving some uh, downlink play-by-play uh, -play from onboard the International Space Station from uh, Flight Engineer Jeff Williams. They're still well forward of us. Um, I think their uh, relative velocity is probably close to zero in terms of crossing the, the face of the window. They still may be slightly faster than us. So a very bright, steady uh, dot of the orbiter with a very bright glow of the contrail behind. Just like watching the contrail behind an airplane, you don't see it immediately behind the orbiter, but it, it forms, um, uh, gosh, I don't know how to characterize the distance. If you held out your hand at arm's length and maybe your one, a little finger width, it becomes very visible and gets brighter as you go back uh, maybe a couple finger widths and, uh, and then it stays as far back as uh, we can see. Atlantis Houston, energy, ground track, and nav are go. Having you touch down at 2,600 feet at 195. That call confirming that the shuttle is right on course for its touchdown at uh, the landing site in Florida. Speed 5,500 miles an hour. Altitude 29 miles. 320 miles to the landing site. Atlantis, Houston for the pass only. Take GPS. Okay, we'll take GPS and F. In addition, for the first time, uh, global positioning satellite data will be accepted by uh, one of the computers on board the shuttle. And Atlantis uh, pass nav looks great on the GPS. Copy. Just under Mach 2. 53 miles to the landing site. Atlantis, Houston, you're on energy approaching the hack. The wind change is 040 at 4, which breaks down as 4 from the right. And you are nominal shoot. And our plan right now is to leave 
air data to nav inhibited. Copy the winds, nominal shoot, and copy the nav plan. Lance will making a right-hand turn around the uh, heading alignment circuit to line up with the runway. Atlantis Houston on at the 180. Copy on at the 180. Pilot Chris Ferguson now flying. A call that the course is on track at the 180 degree mark of the heading alignment circle on runway on the way to runway 33. Speed 470 miles an hour. Altitude 1,000 feet. 13 miles of the runway. This is a view from the heads-up display, providing a point of view of the pilot. Atlantis, Houston, you are on at the 90. Copy, on at the 90. That call at the shuttle is on course at 90 degrees as it aligns with the runway. Commander Brett Jett now controlling again. A minute 45 seconds to touchdown. Houston copies field in sight. Speed 400 miles an hour, the runway in sight. Altitude 100,000 feet or just about two miles. Six and a half miles to touchdown. Speed 400 miles an hour. One minute to touchdown. to 225 feet. Gear down the lock. Touchdown. Drag shoot deploy. Now your touchdown. Copy, we'll stop. Welcome back. Congratulations on return to assembly. We have no immediate post landing deltas. We'll meet you on page 5 3 for post landing. Thank you, Houston. Uh, it's nice to be back and uh, it's a great team effort, so I think assembly's off to a good start. We'll see you on 5 3. And spacecraft communicator Tony Antonelli welcoming Commander Brent Jett and the STS-115 crew of Atlantis home after a successful landing on runway 33 at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, completing a journey of uh, 4 million nine hundred and ten thousand miles. successfully resuming the assembly of the International Space Station with the delivery and installation of a brand new truss structure and solar array.